get started. Um, Jeremy, can you do roll call for me, please? Yes, ma'am. Chair Shiloh Amin Khashoggi. Present. Vice Chair Genevieve C. Sims. Present. Mr. Gerard Takano. Present. Mr. Deontay Thomas. Present. Dr. Cindy Cottle. Present. Dr. David Bland. Here. Mr. Ty Harrell. Present. Mr. Johnny Thomas. And Mr. Grew Webb. Good evening, present. I'll have my camera on in just one second. Thank you. If everyone would turn their cameras on while we are in our meetings, um, I really appreciate it. Um, Jeremy skipped the newest board member. Jeremy, you skipped the newest board member? Okay, I see him. Jeremy. Mr. Hutchinson, please forgive Mr. Lewis Hutchinson, our new appointee. Oh. Present, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that, I apologize. But all right. All cameras on, thank you. Um, we are now going to do the approval of the agenda. Have everyone looked at the, agen uh, the agenda, excuse me. So move. Second. All in favor, just say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. The agenda has been approved from for March 23rd, 2022. Um, approval of minutes from previous meeting, February 23rd, 2022. Have everyone looked at it? Sheila, I've got a couple of editorial questions. Shoot, uh, go ahead. Item, item five, um, the update on recommendations that PAB provided to Raleigh Police Advisory. Who is that? Is that a typo? Would you say that again, Mr. Bland, please? Look at the first bullet under item five. Correct. Update on recommendations that PAB provided to RPD and response no, from the police no, chief. No. Recommendations that RPD provided to who is the police advisory committee? Who is that? Are I'm we sure looking at I'm Policy sure and Procedure Committee. It says uh, update on recommendations that Police Advisory Board provided to Raleigh Police Advisory. I think that means Raleigh Police Department. Yes, thanks, Greer. Is that what it is? Okay. Okay, uh, I have another question. Um, and Jeremy, I've got a couple of editorial things, so I'll just send you an email. Yes, sir. But, uh, under the item, uh, Sherry provided an overview of the policies on the on the uh, it's it's on uh, policy and procedure uh, second bullet. Uh, the first under that second bullet, the first uh, the second box. What is, uh, I know there's got to be a typo in a way to dis, what is that word? D-I-S-S-O-L-A-T-E, what is that word? Which bullet point are you looking at, Mr. Brand? Second bullet, round bullet point. Under policy and procedure. Yes, and then under the second bullet point, the second box. It starts with Gerald's name. Gerald stated that. I believe it's under Jeremy, just to give an assist here. It says Cottle provided an overview of the policies. Then it says first recommended change. First of all, that needs to be first recommended change instead of changed. But yeah. then if you go down to where it says Takano, it says Takano stated that it is written in a way to desolate rather than provide specific services. I don't think desolate is the correct word there. Thank you. What is the right word? I'm not sure. I'd defer to Gerald. <laughs> are we what are we reading the same I'm reading the one that was under email. policy and procedure 6.01 review of acorn recommendations are we no 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 
you're you're in the wrong place look under yeah so that's that's right but david is further down than you are jeremy go down to madam exactly chair, like may I, may I, i'm sorry to interrupt here madam chair might i suggest that either a screen be shared i can share my screen if that's can i um, you share your screen. Let's see. Is if that I, what you said? Yeah, I was suggesting that either the screen be shared so that we can find specifically where, so that we can point out specifically where we're looking at. I see it, but I don't know if, uh, does someone want to share the screen? Okay. Um, right now it's not able. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm disabled no. for some reason. Only the host is able uh, to share. Only Sophia can share screen. Yes, give me one second. So Sophia, yeah, I was gonna say, if you can provide us with the, uh, the agenda copy, and then we can specify where we are because that'll save us some time. It's a Thank minute, it's not the agenda. Minutes, not the agenda. Uh, the minutes. Minutes, yes, pardon me, minutes. pardon me. Thank you for the correction, yes. The, sorry, I scrolled down further than I, it's for the minutes. And can you all see my screen? Yes. yes. Wrong document. There we go. On down. All right, stop. It's that bullet that says caudal. Caudal. Come down. Come down. Come down. Come, down. Come on down. Come on down. Right there. Right there. Right there. All right, go Kano. down to the second box. Yeah, to Kano. Look where Takano said right there. All right, read that line. What is that word? D S O L A T. Written in a way to desolate rather than provide specific services. Isolate? It's a typo. I apologize about that. Would Joel no. want me to read that then? No. What was I'm your not sure that isolate is the proper word either. Yeah, it's not isolate. No, no, either. no. Gerald, what was your intent? I'm trying to think of the intent there. Like I said, I don't recognize the top of my head. Let me see here. And it's a little small for my eyes. I would suggest that uh, the minutes, I'm sorry, the meeting was um, was taped. Is there any way for Jer Jeremy to go back and review the tape on that section? I'll review the tape. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And, 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 go ahead, David. Uh, one other one other editorial correction in that same line at the end of the line the word then should be changed to from and with well, that i move that we approve these minutes pending the correction of the uh, item that we're trying to figure out the wording on thank you would, would you accept a friendly amendment to your motion Yes. Um, and that would be that rather than um, we accept them as modified, that we receive a copy of the modified minutes and we vote by email to approve them. That's fine. I agree. I, I agree. And, and this is Greer. Again, I mentioned a change earlier, but I think it got swamped. Right there, leave it on this page, please. It says, it says Cottle provided an overview of the policies. Then right under that, it says first recommended changed. It should just be changed. We need to take the D off of the word changed. Agreed. Any more corrections? Call the question. We will now we will now just table this and vote on it um, through email after the corrections is made. A motion to agree. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor. Aye. Those Aye. opposed. We will hold these minutes off until the corrections are made. We will move to the next item of the agenda which is um, the staff liaison report. Demetrius. So I'm going to, um, Sophia is going to provide the staff liaison updates. Um, during this transition, I'm going to be here to support her 
so she can fully um, support you all in the staff liaison role. So um, Sophia, take it away. All right, thank you guys. So just as a reminder, um, our next meeting in April will be in person. Of course, the date and time hey. <laughs> will remain the same. Information about that transition is forthcoming. So just check your emails and that will be out to you guys soon. Um, we do have two invites. The first one comes from the Fair Housing on board. They have an upcoming conference on April 29th from 9 to 12. This will be a virtual event. Um, I will be able to get a link there um, for you guys if you're interested in joining that as well. And the Human Relations Committee is hosting the Raleigh um, Mayor's Unity Day, April 9th from 11 to 3. It's at Moore Square. They're inviting everyone for fun, food, and interaction. Sophia, yes. uh, I'm, I'm a slow listener. Could you go back to the 429? What was that organization? That's the Fair Housing Board. Okay. And the date of human relations is April what? April 9th from 11 to 3. And that's at Moore Square. Well, I think uh, since... That one, you know, the mayor or the, your all's office or somebody has given quite a wide uh, publicity distribution on that. I think, don't we have our tent now? Didn't we get a tent and a table and a sign? We did the last um, event we went to. Um, we had a tent and um, a table. I'm not sure. Demetrius, do you know about we do have two generic tents in our um, storage closet. Um, and I do believe you all do have a tablecloth as well. And don't we have a sign? Because what was it that uh, our former member, uh, I thought he had, I thought he had a sign made for us. It we wasn't know. a sign. You're talking about rat cards. My bad, Deontay. You're talking about oh, no, the little pamphlet cards that were made. No, no. I'm I thought we had one of those kind of signs that you put on a, you know, drape on a table or something. Like a no, banner? No, we did not. Yeah, like we a did, banner. No, we did not. When we went to um, the events, uh, Miss Genevieve and Jeremy and myself went, we did not. We discussed about having a sign and there was some discrepancy about the logo, so we never got a chance to do that. Well, I think, I, would, I don't, if we can get it done, I think we ought to have a table and a tent at this 4-9 meeting, and we ought to uh, get a sign made, PDQ. That's up to the um, Community Engagement Committee. All right. <laughs> Jeremy, don't you agree? <laughs> we'll you address it in a minute, Mr. Bland. I, uh, when we share, sir, I, I do hear you, Ms. Duck. I do. All right, good. Uh, Deontay, was it you who knew how to, uh, uh, you know, you knew where you could get sign or uh, banners made and, and that kind of thing? Was that, and, and is there still a question, uh, Sheila, on a logo? There's still questions on the city logo. Um, that was Sean who was doing the, doing the signs and we would have to start again. And let's, let's not um, hold up the meeting. We're gonna table that um, to our retreat. Our retreat. Wait a meeting. minute. Our retreat, you're gonna be right on top of this four nine meeting if you wait till the retreat. Well, either way, David, we're not gonna be able to um, get it turned around that quickly. We do have a table and we do have a um, tablecloth and cards. If you want to do that and then and discuss care. the rest. I, don't, I think that's a mistake. Go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, did you say we have a tablecloth with our name on it or did I miss here? We do not, Greer. Um, I was going to address that when we hit community engagement in a second. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll wait. I just no, wanted to make sure. I was just I, yeah. Yeah, David is going ahead of us um, a little bit. Jeremy, we discussed a lot of that in, in his um, presentation. 
David. Very well. Um, Sophia, had um, you finished? Yes, ma'am. That were all the updates. Okay. Mr. Ty, did you have anything? I did not. Okay. We'll move forward in um, the chair report. As you all know, we have a new um, at large alternate, um, Lewis Hutchison. We would like for him, welcome him and to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Mr. Hutchison. You're muted, Lewis. All right. I, took me a minute to find the mute button there. So, uh, I, well, Lewis Hutchison, and uh, I'm, I am so grateful to be a member of the board here. I'm, I'm so happy to join you all. Um, Lewis Hutchison, I've been in Raleigh. I lived here once before from 2007 till 2010 and then came back in 2016 and, and uh, been here ever since. Uh, I am a lawyer by, by trade, but uh, I don't practice law. I'm the Dean of Students at Duke Law School. And so um, student affairs and, and helping students get through the law school process is my, is my nine to five. I'm excited to be here joining everybody. So I look forward to serving and contributing where I can. Good to have you. <laughs> I see you, girl. Um, thank you, Mr. Hutchison. We appreciate it. And thank you for joining us tonight. Um, the next report um, I want to talk about, um, one of the questions that, um, David had asked about the grant um, and us being in the grant with the Raleigh uh, Police Department. I did give it to the chief. Unfortunately, she has not had time to review, but I'm expecting an answer um, soon, David. All right. Okay. So um, that's all the chair report. A reminder that next week is our retreat. Um, at the Pathway Center um, from nine to one. We probably won't take that much time, but from nine to one, um, we will have, um, Ms. Genevieve, we will have, con um, a, what, Ms. Genevieve, let me ask you, what will we have for breakfast or lunch or dinner or whichever? Coffee and some um, muffin type stuff. Okay. And maybe some fruit. Okay. And that is um, April. Tea, by the way, tea. Okay, tea. Let me not forget the tea drinkers. Yeah, please don't. Okay. <laughs> so April the second <laughs> at the Pathway Center, we will be at um, for our retreat, and um, we have the agenda for that. Um, so that's basically my report. Um, so we'll move forward in the committee's report. Um, Mr. Blair, Blair, I ask you a Blair, question, Madam Chair. Jeremy, what did you say? Just say. Mr. Jeremy. Blair, this is to speak, Miss Miss Sheila. David. Yes. Um, are we going to address the other two questions that I raised in that email to you at a later point in this meeting, or is that appropriate for your? Chuck, here report. Um, not at this particular time. Uh, if we have any time, we will, but not at this particular time. We will address it, but not at this particular time. We just don't want to run out of time. Jeremy has a uh, presentation he has to do. We did not get to through the last. Um, the last meeting. So we wanna right. make sure we allot some time for Jeremy to give his report and also give um, his presentation to the, um, to the board. Is that fair? Go for it. Okay, thank you. So we will now ask for the committee report, which is Jeremy is gonna uh, community um, committee report. He's gonna present and also do a presentation. Take it away, Jeremy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we just want, the committee just wants to give an update on all the work that we've been doing since the um, action plan has been adopted. 
um, that was the vision and hope that we would, um, the direction that we would go forward. And we are learning that um, the reality are much deeper and much more complex than, than they were, um, respectfully saying that to you all. Um, I've had meetings with the city, with Sophia and um, the chief and the LGBTQ representative and, um, and people from the city and just navigating how do we make community engagement more real in our, in our, in our community. Um, the challenge that we're facing is, um, well, the reality of the pandemic, but also, um, can y'all hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so in, we're discussing about uh, an opportunity in June when um, ACORN celebrates its one year anniversary. So we will share that with you all. Um, although we haven't had in-person meeting, I, I've been asking community members myself about 80, 80 people I've asked and said, what are your thoughts on policing and how we can make it better? And the responses are fascinating. Um, but we do to say that we have events lined up yet, we're not there yet. Um, remember the image that I said about building a bridge. We are literally hammer, I feel like we're making the soil, the soil able to hold the structure. And so that's where we're at in, in our community engagement, Madam Chair. I also want to update the, Dr. Bland um, before, sure. sir. I also want to update regarding the polo discussion that we've had that we thought we would be using for community engagement. I've reached, um, so I've asked Sophia about the logo and um, our liaison, John, um, Council Person Melton is working on that now. Um, apparently committees and boards are not allowed to use the word Raleigh or um, the logo of the city. So we were told that we can't use the tree because it, I thought it was a trademark logo and that made sense to me as I've communicated with you all. Um, but apparently it's, so I pulled the crest of this, the coat of arm of our city. And with that, we cannot also use that on our, on our shirts. And to address Dr. Bland, your note earlier, with the 5,000 budget we were allocated, I was thinking that we would, we would like to have a table and a, a, a collapsible um, sign for us to use, um, but we are, we're working with the city in fixing that should they, should they allow us to use the logo in our shirts. I don't think we should, go ahead, Greer, so, sorry. No, no, please finish. I don't think we should move forward with the, the, the polo shirts as, until we hear from the city about the logo and being able to use that. Um, someone, um, Councilperson Melton and I were tossing ideas about the possibility of us designing our own logo. And I personally, in my view, I don't think that's what we should do um, because we, when we go to the community, we speak in the name of the city. Like we are a board of, of the city. And so we're just waiting a lot. I'm learning more now that a lot of community, a lot of the things we're doing can only go as fast or as slow as our dialogue partners. And I'm realizing that perhaps I was naive in the beginning and saying, oh my gosh, let's do X, Y, and Z. Um, but I don't have a magic wand and I don't have, yeah, I have to go and we have to go. As, yeah, that's what I, what I have to share. Guri, go for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just trying to lock this down. So what exactly are we waiting to hear back from the city on regarding the logo and the t-shirts? Is it whether we can use it at, at all or whether we can use the word Raleigh? I'm just wondering, you know, what's taking them so long on so that? So you want to chime in or would you want me to uh, answer that? Yes, you can go ahead. Please okay. answer. Right. Yeah, so as of right now, we're not able to uh, use the city logo on anything. So it's a hard no as of right now. They're not going to allow the city logo. It's not just our board from what, I've, from what I've gathered. It's not just police advisory board. Every board in the city cannot, or commissions and committees cannot use the logo. And I am asking um, for the city to reconsider that um, since we are, um, I just need the city to crown our work, to dignify our work. With the logo, with the crest of the city, um, and so we're. Go ahead. Marie. Yeah, just just to follow up. So, did you also say we can't use the word Raleigh, or did I make that up? City of Raleigh. That's what I remembered from the communication that Sophia shared with me that we cannot use the word. So we Raleigh. can't say even City of Raleigh Police Advisory Board, which is who we are, 
on the shirts just so we can use some of our funding for this cycle. Is that That's it? insane. Am I understanding that correctly, Sophia, or? So, um, go ahead, yeah, Demetrius. Okay, let me go ahead and wrap this. I don't want this to take too much of your board. We only have an hour, so you know, we'll start talking, we'll be right, here for two go. hours. So the issue is last summer, um, um, leadership, City of Raleigh leadership determined that boards of commissions could not use city branding. And that started back last summer. They've been having conversations since last summer around the branding and allowing boards and commissions to use branding. This is a conversation that has gone back and forth since last summer, and we are still waiting on clarifying guidance on that. So just know this has been literally more than six months in the making, and we are still trying to receive guidance on that. It's not us. We're just waiting to get guidance on that. Um, we have 30 boards and commissions. 30 boards and commissions have expressed, expressed their displeasure with not being able to use city branding when trying to create any type of marketing or promotional material. Um, and so that's where we are right now with the use of the city of Raleigh brand. Uh, when you say just follow up, I don't want to take all the time, but this is important because if we're going to print any of the materials that we're talking about using to connect with the community, I want to make sure we're clear on what city of Raleigh branding means. Does that mean we can't use the word Raleigh? Can we just say Raleigh Police Advisory Board? Is it the logo? Is it the colors, which I think are green and dark green? Can you kind of help me understand? As of so my knowledge, what I do understand, it's anything related to the city branding. So the tree, the logo, the color schemes, that's from my knowledge right now as of March 23rd, 2022. So we can create t-shirts to your understanding that say City of Raleigh Police Advisory Board in a color that's not their color scheme and start wearing them next month. You possibly can. However, I can follow up with the email for you after I consult with the communications person. Okay, thank you. I just, I guess add my personal displeasure to this process. I'm seeing the, the faces of some of my fellow board members. And I mean- I mean, you have every right to be, just know this is not us making this decision. We're no, I understand just that. To, I understand yeah. that it's not on y'all, but even in talking with Councillor Melton, I'm, I don't, I know we could spend hours talking, but I'm still confused at who holds the authority to make that decision right now. Is it the legal office? If city council can't get something done about this? I mean, this doesn't make any sense to me. I, I'm not blaming you or Sophia, <laughs> I'm just wondering, who is who are you waiting to hear from? I guess. God. <laughs> David said God. I think city, city of Raleigh is a lot more problematic than just Raleigh Police Advisory Board. So I would say we can they they can't <laughs> Raleigh is used by multiple different business entities and all that. But I think City of Raleigh, we're probably gonna get some issues. Um, yeah. so you think Raleigh Police Advisory Board would be fine. I, I would defer to wait for Demetrius's email because I'm not a trademark lawyer here in any type of way. But <laughs> I may be waiting until the crows come home, but okay. Yeah. But I, I I would like to think that we could I'm not completely opposed to just us designing a logo or just having Raleigh Police Advisory Board on a shirt if we're trying to move forward with that amount. Because I think it, the longer we spend on this, we're going to go to another fiscal year and still not have spent any of the money that we've been budgeting for for the past two years. Well, that's what I was suggesting is Raleigh Police Advisory Board, Deontay, on the shirts, but you were saying to wait for the email. Are you saying you think- well, I, I, Just because I don't want to put my neck out there to say, hey, I just <laughs> right, because I, I, I really don't know. But I, if you want to, my layman's guess it, I don't think that Raleigh, just saying Raleigh would be safe, but until some lawyer signs off on that, I think we probably need to stay away from it. Or right. we mess around and waste our money. <laughs> Mr. Ty. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Deontay brings up a, a point that I was going to address or at least inquire about regarding the um, the fiscal year and the, the funding during said fiscal year. In my short time on the board, uh, we came in, we, we set together a budget. We put together a budget um, to propose to the city council, it was approved. But my question is, uh, if that budget has been approved for this fiscal year and we are rapidly approaching the next fiscal year, do we lose the funding that we were already approved for? Yes. Um, and if that is the case, 
uh, what, what are we looking to do to rectify the matter? And perhaps this is a, a question that can be better addressed off, offline, considering that we, uh, that we have uh, a small amount of time to cover a lot of, uh, a lot of topics. And I don't want to shortchange anyone, but it's something to, to consider as we, uh, as we continue to move forward. David? Uh, I'd like to make a, a list of things. Number one, I think we should hold off on spending anything on the t-shirt until Deont uh, uh, gets back to us, uh, Demetrius gets back to us with what the Raleigh, the Raleigh says about using saying Raleigh Police Advisory Board. As soon as we get a yes on that, if we do, I think we should go on and get those stupid t-shirts and be ready to do the event on April the 9th. Number two, uh, there's no reason we cannot go ahead now and have somebody find uh, a vendor who could do a uh, one of those signs, one of those, I don't know what they're, like a linoleum, I don't know what it is, but like a tablecloth, I don't know what it is, but some, the sign, apron. what is it? An what apron. It? Yeah, whatever it apron. is. Get a, get a sign made, and I would suggest that somebody or a couple of people on the board who are good at wordsmithing come up with, uh, there ought to be something more on that sign than just Raleigh Police Advisory Board. It ought to say for our Raleigh citizens, or it ought to say something that communicates to the community. That's number two. Number three, uh, I think that we should make sure that those brochures, didn't we print brochures for several months ago? I think we need to make sure that those brochures are, are current or at least don't have any uh, erroneous stuff in them and use those brochures on the ninth. And finally, uh -huh. on, on, on all of that, uh, I think that uh, 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 Sheila, you need to get a, a commitment from us at the at the retreat, how many of us could be there for the ninth to represent this board to the community? And that's it. And just clarification, did I saw some yes nods and some shaking of the heads no. Do we have Raleigh Police Advisory Board uh, flyers, pamphlets, brochures already printed out some in, in, in some, sorry, stations somewhere? <laughs> we do. And that has City of Raleigh branding on it. Okay, I'm sorry, let's move on. Right, let's move on. Now, yes. uh, uh, Sheila, I would like to come to the report that Jeremy made, and I'd like to make four or five points. Number one, I love the, the report he put together. I do think it's too aggressive. I think that we should limit the community meetings that we're talking about between now and July to not more than two, because I think we're going to overstretch ourselves. Number two, um, I think that our uh, highest priority in terms of communicating to the community ought to be the uh, recommendations and, and paper that we did. And Sheila, you're, what you did was very, very helpful on that, on the 21 CP. We have never talked to the community about 21 CP and that is something we ought to do. Number three, uh, the, uh, I think that we would uh, gain a great deal if one, two, or three of us, or however how many would like to do it, would go to uh, Charlotte or some city that has a PAB and talk to their chairperson and the staff person that they have in their city and talk to them about what they have done, are planning to do, and how they're structured. That, I, I just, you know, we, none of us have been on a police advisory board before. We've been on a bunch of other boards, but we ought to find out what other people are doing. And maybe we'd learn something from them. So that's my comment. If I might ask a question, Madam Chair. Sure. Um, David, when you say um, Jeremy's report is too aggressive and that we shouldn't attend more than 
two community or have more than two community meetings, what report are you referring to? Well, it's a report that's entitled revised and it's the one that all of us got a mail got mailed and it's uh item number one says i'm sorry mailed on when david i don't know it's the report i'm sorry i had to to answer the door my camera's off it's the report jeremy emailed i believe mr Dan bland is is mentioning to us called revised was it mailed to all of the board members or just to community engagement? No, it was emailed to all of us. I see it in my email. The one that was supposed to be shared last month um, with the action report. Remember at the January meeting. Dr. Maybe Mr. Sophia can screen share it. I'm sorry. Maybe we can just screen share it since we're not all able to pull it up right now. No, that's all right. I just needed to know what David was referring to. It doesn't need to be screen shared. But, but I can go back and find it. It was sent out and and uh, in the item number one, it had recommended four community meetings and I'm suggesting that so that's aggressive. Let's do two and see how it goes. And item number two was uh, addressed specifically 21 CP. I think we ought to go forward with that post haste. And number four was the issue of talking to other uh, PABs and other cities, uh, and uh, I guess at some point in time we're going to talk uh, about uh, uh, use of force. So I'll hold off on that one. Did we have a follow up? Did we have a deadline, Jeremy, for the? Oh, I'm sorry. Deontay, thank you. He got it. Uh, do we have a follow-up timeline for those four meetings, Jeremy? Was there an end, end, end date by which we wanted to have those? Because if it is the end of this funding cycle, yeah, that's a bit aggressive. But By June. We did, by June. Okay. I mean, I agree that we can probably cut that down because you're saying we're still kind of laying the foundation. But if we have two by June or three, I think that would be better. On that note, um, but I'll let you. I also have a question, Madam Chair, if I may, please. Sure, go ahead. Jeremy. Regarding Mr. Bland's comment about talking to other PABs, Greer, I know you're in the governor's uh, board. Is that something that you guys are? Yeah, is that something yes, that you guys are thinking of doing? Maybe bringing the PABs together. So that's something that I can definitely bring to them. The governor's crime commission usually doesn't deal with police advisory boards, but I believe that. Sheila, um, Madam Chair, has talked at least or has the con or has a way to get the contact information for the police advisory board of either Charlotte or another. And so it sounds like Mr. Blaine was almost suggesting maybe a field trip or a joint conference where we can talk to them as a more established board. And I feel like we tried to reach out to them before. So Jeremy, I'm, I mean, that's something I can bring up, but that may take more time. I thought that uh, either Madam Chair or, or Vice Chair had communicated with other boards in the past. And maybe now that COVID is Hopefully, um, on the decline, we can have more of those conversations. Well, I don't. I don't think, in my opinion, Greer. I appreciate your uh, check, wanting to check in on that, but that's going to be six more months if government does its effective way. Oh yeah, I, I was. I agree. I agree. I don't think that's the best way. I, that's why I asked um, if we had other ways to contact those boards, Sheila. There's no reason. There's no reason why we can't pick up the telephone and call the. Uh, uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg, get the name of the person, the staff person, like the same comparable staff person as uh, Demetrius and, and Sophia, set up a meeting and go talk to them. We could learn something. At the time when we started, when we started the police advisor board, I think it was, um, um, I forgot who I was a la liaison then, I think it was Pam. Uh, she would, reached out to, I think, the chair of um, their board, um, but nothing really happened in that area in Charlotte. Well, and then, that's why then we I had a new, well, and we can discuss this in, um, um, during our retreat, we, you know, because it's up to the community engagement to actually really connect those two boards together. I mean, I can be- um, No, that's not necessary, Sheila. We have it in the report 
and the Lord has approved the report, we're ready to go. We're just letting you know we're ready to do that. Okay, that's not up to me though, David. That's up to community engagement. If you have it in your report, you would have to do you would have to do that do that um, plan. Then we'll do it. If it's in your plan, that's what you're gonna have to do. We'll do it. Um, Johnny, I can't see you, um, your camera. Thank you. Anything else, Jeremy? No, ma'am. Anything from the community engagement um, committee? Uh, just last thing for me. Did you mention something? And uh, sorry, Mr. Bland, were all of your points hit on? I couldn't. I yeah. Based on what Sheila said, we are empowered to do what we've got in this report. And I think Jeremy needs to get our heads together and let's truck on. Okay, we'll discuss that at the retreat for sure. Um, Jeremy, did you mention something about acorns? I don't know if this is the appropriate time, but I was wanting an update on the edits we made, you know, last meeting. And then I think we were going to have me hearing some feedback, but maybe have a community discussion about acorns. Yeah, it's on the work, it's on the action plan that the revised one as well, Greer. Um, we've realized that we are reaching the one year anniversary of its establishment. And so that the city suggested that it would be a good idea for all of us for, for that time to reflect on it, what we can do better, where has it been and where we want it to go and hear from the community. So that's sometime in June. Um, while, we're, while, while we're here also, um, I have a meeting, we have a, I have a meeting, I think myself and Ty has a meeting with, um, RPD liaisons um, in early April to discuss um, how can we really make community engagement work alongside RPD. So um, that's a forthcoming event that I will share with you all. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, I just wanted to, I see your hand, Mr. Bland, but harp down on that. Um, so the one year anniversary of ACORNS is coming up, but we as a board have our recommendations, right, on that policy that we edited last time. And so I'm wondering if now it's a time for an update because whenever we go into that community meeting, I want our board to be united around, uh, you know, that. So I don't think we've approved or voted on that, but I think there were just some grammatical edits that either Dr. Cottle or, or somebody else on the leadership team was going to make. Are we they did do the um the grammat it was just grammatical error errors and that recommendation once because we did get it approved last um meeting except the uh recommend uh the grammatical errors so it has went up to um the police of chief Madam I thought it went to the city council I'm sorry uh, the city council I'm sorry Madam Chair it's, it's already moved I, I that's fine but none of us have seen the final document that you must have sent to the city council. And I think we should see it. I, um, David, um, I did send it out. Nope. We have not gotten a final copy of the Akron report that resulted from our last meeting. Yeah, I don't think I've seen it either after the edits. I will send, I will send it out. Thank you. I may have missed it, but I don't. I remember sending the edits along to Chair and Dr. Cottle, but I never got the final version. I'm looking at my email now. I think I sent it out, but if I didn't, charge it to my head, not my heart. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I usually I usually try to be on point, so one of the things I might have missed. Anything else, Jeremy, for his community yeah. engagement? Yes, and then um, Juneteenth is happening soon. So I think we'll be discussing about what we want to do with that um, in that in, if we want to participate in that. So perhaps we'll talk about that during the retreat as well. And May, I believe, is National Police Week. And we have an opportunity to reach um, our policing community as well. So I guess we'll talk about that at the retreat as well and how we want to um, do outreach for those events. And I think we should be receiving a invitation to that from the chief. Am I correct? I believe so, ma'am. An invitation to what exactly? I'm sorry. It's called National Police Week. Right. 
And there is an event where they honor the, uh, those who have fallen in service. And so everybody um, who's in public safety, who's, who died in service will be prayed, will be praying for them at a vigil, I believe. And I believe this, um, Sophia will communicate the date when that's finalized with us to invite our board members to, um, to come together and pray. I think that's it for me, Ms. Sheila, unless other board members have, other committee members have anything to add. Okay, we'll move forward to the recommendation for the psychological services, 1107-07 Police and Policy and Procedure Committee. Um, did y'all receive that, the recommendation? Did everybody all we, receive it? All we got, I, all I got was a statement on March the 17th that said that they wanted to define the, the term client and that they couldn't review the rest of it because it was covered in um, a legal document, uh, statute 8 53. Has there been any that was else? the only recommendation, Greer? Uh, uh, just kind of expanding on that, I don't know if Gerald is able to speak to this or you, Madam Chair, why just more clarification around why they weren't able to go into the rest of those recommendations. What is what is there that reason again? Let me speak to that, Madam Chair. Yes, Genevieve. If you look at 1107-01 and look at the statute that is referenced in that document, you will find that the majority of 1107-01-01 is nothing but a repeat of the statute. And so if you want to make recommendations for changes to the statute, then you need to be talking with the city's um, um, liaison to the legislature to pass those recommendations through that person in order to get the statute amended. So it's not something that we can do. Oh, I'm not speaking personally to make any recommendations, but I'm just wondering, I thought this board put forth recommendations and the email I got back from Madam Chair, uh, there was some sort of reasoning as to what whatever we were seeking was not able to be implemented. So I don't think that's a, a me thing. No, there was nothing that we were trying to change in the statute. Okay, that's what I thought. So maybe I don't think Sheila's email was was um, explain that, but there was nothing that we wanted to change in the statute. Okay. So the only change that we would we were suggesting to 1107 was that definition. Uh, Gen uh, Genevieve, uh, yes, I just David. want to make sure that that I'm I'm hearing right. We are talking about 1101-07. No, we're talking about 11. Whoa, whoa! Hold on for a second. We're talking about the psychological services one. That's what I thought was 1101. If it is 1101-07, then that's the one we're talking about. Okay. Now, I have, uh, I understood that a portion of this was covered in that statute, but the front portion of that was not uh, tied directly to the statute. And for example, um, what action is taken when officers have been involved in a deadly use of force? relative to the psychological services. That is not addressed in this. And there's nothing in that statute, because I read it, that would prohibit our an officer being that issue and that kind of psychological service being provided. That's- I believe, David, if you look at this, if, I believe if you look at both the statute and the policy, you will find that there's a reference to critical incident and I think a and Gerald, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think any any um, involvement in a shooting, uh, a murder would would be considered a critical incident and is covered by that statute and by the policy. If you look at uh, page six of that policy, where it says individual critical incident, there is no definition of what that entails. Gerald, I believe you asked about guidelines. Yeah, it's it's a yeah, it's yeah. You're right there. It doesn't include specifically what it entails. I all I could tell you is about how it is interpreted and and used, and it's very broad. It pretty much means that 
if any officers involved in or even witnesses in which uh, a, a person's or any person's dies, could be a car accident, anything else, that can be included in critical incident, which they can uh, go forward with and seek the services of the psych of the police psychologists and other services uh, within the but, city. But don't don't you think that I mean, if we're uh, looking at this policy uh, critically, don't you think it ought to be defined? I mean, I, you know, I'm just raising the issue. Uh, I, I just I don't, don't understand that. Um, it doesn't hurt to add examples of what would be to, to include what a critical consent could be examples of. Yeah, I agree. And I don't disagree with that. I mean, I, yeah, you sort of say critical consent and examples, but not to include all could be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, yes. Right. You know. All right, second point on page four, Top of the page, item three. The communications are related to a violation of criminal law. Second sentence, this subdivision does not require the disclosure of otherwise privileged communications related to an officer's use of force. What does that David, mean? That is in the statute. That is a repeat of the statute. And so if you're going to be examining this particular policy, you need to put the statute beside it so that you see that this what portions follow the statute. I agree. I have, one, I have one last point I want to make. Um, on page five, uh, middle of the page, it talks about compensation. Uh, everything in this document talks about people volunteering to do this and to be peer. Peer, review, peer helpers and that kind of stuff. I think that it is totally confusing the process by introducing the fact that these people can be paid on by contract. I think that I think you're mixing apples and oranges when you do that kind of thing. You lose the issue of my I'm a I'm a friend of yours, Genevieve. I know you've been bothered by what you last experienced. And I want to be your friend and I want to help you. That is not a paid process. Cheryl, can you explain that as to how that is done within the department? So those are generally volunteers who then are either approved by, again, as it says, a board selected by the, or appointed by the chief. And they're generally all Raleigh police officers who've usually been involved in critical incidents and then have volunteered to be a part of basically a peer group to help uh, as part of the process with uh, oversight from the police psychologist who also provides the training for them. And that whole compensation section is really that most times on duty. And sometimes it may be off their duty. If it's off their duty, they can get some comp time. That means get their time back to take off for it. So that's where the whole compensation falls in. But it's, it's generally that's only Raleigh police officers who's been involved in critical incidents who have been selected and trained as part of that particular group. And so that general thing is that there's a rare, a rare possibility that one or more of the members of that group may be coming in on their own voluntarily. And the department says, no, we want to make sure that your time is taken care of if you came in off regular duty hours to be a part of that debriefing group. And that's generally, that's how that is set up to be. I can understand your point of view uh, on looking at being paid, but really it's, it's kind of a on duty type thing that they're done. Uh, when the groups meet, and sometimes one or more of them may be off at the time, and their so their time is just basically compensated for them as general practices. Well, my only comment is that uh, uh, when I was working in the prison systems years ago, we had a thing like this, and we did not compensate people because it confused the role definition once you did that. I think it is something that we ought to, in my opinion, ought to take a look at. What do you think, Cindy? You're in, that's your business. You mute, Cindy. She can't.
I think she said she's going to type her response while she's while she's typing, since we only have about five minutes left. Uh, this is what I just remembered to follow up on. What was your recommendation, Mr. Bland, about the 21 CP report? Was that an action item that we needed to do? Well, that's a part of that's in Jeremy's report. And it's an action item that that apparently we're going to get to go forward with because it's in the report. So I think that, you know, when we get together as a subcommittee, let's decide what our steps are going to be and let's get it done. Okay, uh, sounds good. I just didn't know if that was a publishing thing because remember when we put on things on the website, we do have to kind of channel that through the chair and through the city of Raleigh. So I don't know. Um, that we, I don't know that we're publishing anything yet. I mean, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, second thing is, Madam Chair, I just wanted to get this in before the time's running out. Um, do we have an update on whether we're going to get a liaison from the police department, meaning a current officer or representative from the chief, anytime soon? I know, I believe you said you'd have an update for us by this meeting. We've made that request, right? I have no clue. We've made the request though, right? No, I have not made that request yet. Oh, well, I don't know if we need to make a motion or what, but I think we would benefit by having a representative from the police department as we did last year at, at these meetings to answer some of these questions about code and policy. Sorry, I thought we discussed that previously. I don't, no, we did not agree. Uh, you know, I have to go through the board. You know, anything that um, we discuss has to go through the board to have a recommendation in order for me to move forward on. Uh, we have a representative, from my understanding, Gerald is the uh, police department. I know you saying a current, somebody that's already working for Raleigh PD, am I correct? Is that what you're saying? Uh, Clarification? Sure, that is correct. And secondly, I know that all matters like that have to go through the board. I thought we had brought this up as a board before. Am I wrong in thinking that early on we had representatives from the police department and maybe even police lawyers that attended our meeting? I could speak to that, Madam Chair. Sure. If you'll remember, and you are absolutely correct in your memory, the problem that we had, is, if you'll remember, is that when they did show up at the meeting, they consumed all of our time. You know, they were not there to listen to us or to just give us an answer to a specific um, question that we might have. They took over the entire meeting, which is why we, we stopped doing that. Do you remember yeah, well, that now? Oh, I, I surely remember that. I didn't know if we were having maybe a sea change or, or a, maybe if that was just a specific person with this new chief who seems to be pretty engaged. And maybe I'm the only one that thinks this, but I just think we would benefit by having a current police officer there to not only you know, defend current policy or anything, but to actually help. But if, if we don't imagine that to be helpful, then um, I'll take that back. I know it's eight o'clock. Yeah. So my I'm last- saying, I'm not suggesting that it's not helpful. I'm just, what I would suggest that if you're going to make that motion, that we be very specific in terms of what we want the person or persons to do at each one of our meetings. Okay, that's fair. I That's fair. I also think that, you know, if that were to happen, that we also have the leeway as actually appointed members to the board to kind of in a way control the meetings, but I know you can't control people talking. Um, last thing for me is I just direct people from the chat. It looks like Dr. Kimberly McTarian has put messages in the chat for us. I know Dr. Cottle, I think, has responded or been mentioned, um, but some of this stuff is very alarming. Um, so I would just want to, to make sure that we are looking at this as we do I represent the community. I have been looking at it as, as you have responded to most of them. I think Cindy responded to one. Um, it is, um, Madam Chair, I would suggest that we um, have the staff copy those comments and provide those to us so that we can discuss them at the retreat. Good suggestion. I think that's a great suggestion. I think community input will get easier when we're in person, but for now, I don't think they can speak. All they have is the chat. So I would definitely harp on that comment, um, either Demetrius or Sophia, I'm not sure who has control, to copy these comments by Dr. McTerry and, and, and have them for us by the retreat. Uh, this is very alarming to me, especially as somebody who just came out of Wake County Public Schools recently. That sounds good. Um, Sophia, can you make sure the... Um... The comments come to the whole board, the whole chair, I mean, the whole board, so we can discuss them by next week, um, by um, our retreat, so we can give an update to the community. 
Yes, ma'am. Thank you. For the purposes of anyone who is online, um, the retreat is just for the board. It's just a reminder that it's just for the board, that the public is not, um, is not invited to the retreat. Any more comments? I guess, Greer, that was our new business since you saw that I was going to say it. So you said it before I could even say it. <laughs> but um, I guess that's our new business. Um, we have any old business? Okay. Well, we have um, finished for tonight. Um, anyone have any more comments? Um, did we do, uh, Ms. Genevieve, I want to make sure I am correct. Did we do recommendations or when, uh, for 1101-07? believe that David made a couple of recommendations, uh, one of which Gerald has um, suggested that we include some examples in our recommendations regarding critical incident. Okay. And I think we, we can easily do those. Um, and, and then we would have our recommendations on that policy. That sounds good. Um, all board members, um, thank you so much. And thank you um, panel that in the chat room, we will discuss um, on April 2nd at our retreat. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. Good, good night. night. Good night, everybody. Good evening. Thank you. Good night.